Welcome to the Torpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow torpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Coming up on today's show, it's Sunday, it's what I learned this week. I share with you why we pulled an episode of the podcast a few days ago. I also chat with you about the difficulties in being honest and candid as a content creator and how sometimes sharing an opinion can lose you friends and also make you some. We talk about the big news coming out of Arrival. They've moved their Phoenix event from September to November. I talk through the cancellation policies, why I give Arrival a lot of credit in the way they're addressing force majeure this time round. And I talk through my own decision. Should I stay or should I go? So stay tuned for that. And finally, the beta version of our Tourpreneur approved directory is now live. This is where we can submit our recommendations for all those wonderful companies out there either products, services, tools, apps, courses, whatever is helping you to grow your business, you can come on to the approved directory and share that with your peers. And guess what? There's no funnel. There's no PDFs. There's no marketing. You come on the site, you enter in your submission, or you go to the drop down, find what you're looking for, and find uh, recommendations from your fellow entrepreneurs. So there's a lot in this one. Stay tuned. The world's only weekly independent podcast for the tours and activities industry. This is Tourpreneur. Hello and welcome to episode 94 of the Tourpreneur podcast. Another installment of what I learned this week. And where do I start? It's been quite the week in many ways. Um, Let me start off with a first for Tourpreneur in that we pulled an episode on Tuesday. We've never done that before. Our guest is a DC-based tour operator. For want of a better word, there were shenanigans in DC and the tour operator didn't feel right talking about reopening with everything that was going on. And also, you know, I sat back and thought, well, with uh, what happened in Minneapolis, is it right for us to put an episode out? I was kind of confused a little bit by posting of the Black Square. Um, I'm never really entirely sure. I tried to read the room. I don't want to be tone deaf. And I thought about it and thought, you know what, let's just have a day off, a day to reflect. And regards Black Lives Matter, uh, I try and keep Torpreneur agnostic politically. Uh, I just like to think, I didn't send an email out. Like it seems most companies are sending an email out. And I do wonder how much of that is a keeping up with the Joneses kind of thing. I didn't send an email out because I hope Two things. First of all, well, three things. I'm not an employer of hundreds and thousands of staff, right? So I'm not a big media organization. I'm not a hotel chain. It's just me. Um, Secondly, I hope that you judge Tourpreneur by the diversity of guests that we have on, male, female, people of color, etc. You know, when I interview a guest, I'm always like, okay, what's the learning? I'm not really looking at the person's religion or sex or color or religion or whatever else. And that's the beauty of podcasting in a way, to be honest with you. Um, And thirdly, I naively maybe like to think that majority of us in the tour industry, activities industry, the travel industry, uh, believe that we break down barriers by traveling and by enjoying our tours and activities and experiences. So we decided to pull that, that episode Um, Then a couple of days later, we're back to producing content because I know that's what's keeping us all sane right now is being connected, hearing from others, learning from others, especially those who are in the same boat. I also learned this week that being a content creator is a tough world. So there was some news from Arrival. They are launching a virtual summit on June 25th, my birthday, and... The news came out, I read the agenda, I put it in my daily brief, and <laughs> straight away, I'm like, I had some thoughts on it. I thought, you know what, the world doesn't need Whaley's thoughts on this. Let our listeners in the community decide. And uh, yeah, right away on the group, somebody copied and pasted the, the brief and said, hey, what do you think of this summit? And I'm like, now nah, I'm on the spot. And as I said a few weeks ago when I started this segment, because this, this really is kind of my editorial, right? I, I try... 
I include my views now and again, but I'm trying to get better at just presenting the facts, especially with the written content on Torpreneur. But I thought I'm being asked my genuine opinion. My opinion was I wouldn't pay $147 for that. And I felt the information on reopening, I think it was a bit early because, you know, you've heard me say this on the show so many times. I like to know what you've done rather than what you're going to do. Because that's all I've heard during this whole crisis is what's going to happen going forward to travel. I don't think any of us really know. And I I don't want to put it in that same bracket. But yeah, I I want to know, how did you reopen? How did you reassure your guests? That's that's the information I'm after. So I gave my opinion uh, very honestly, I, I think constructively. And... I do have some sympathy for a rival in that then our good friend, Alan Russ said, well, actually, I think this information is too late. We're already open. So, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. I get that. Um, But then I did get emails from people who said, you're out of order, a rival are doing good things. Why did you say that? I'm like, well, you know what? I keep saying, I'm not here to make friends. I'm here to make you money or save you money and help you grow your business. I'm not a lackey to anyone. And I love the Arrival guys. I've spent so many episodes talking them up because I honestly feel each and every one of you should go to an Arrival event when it's safe to do so. And more on that in a bit. But there are going to be times I disagree with them. Um, And I didn't think 150, I know there's 150 bucks we can all do a lot with right now. And I just gave my honest opinion. So if you think that's out of order, as some of you wrote to me and said, that's your prerogative. Um, But I'm not going to ever be... (sighs) You know, I, I'm going to be candid with you. And there are times I'm going to be wrong. And maybe I'm wrong about this. You know, Douglas Quimby gave his opinion. He also said there was a $100 discount for tour operators. Well, I'm sorry, that wasn't on the website. And maybe if Arrival had sent me that information before, I would have put that in the brief. So it does go two ways here. Um, I'm going to talk to Douglas this week about it. Maybe I am wrong. And I'm, I'm certainly prepared to accept that. And to come back on here next week and talk why that, that session, that virtual summit might be right for you. Also, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm just sick of, of, of virtual right now. And maybe this is a personal issue to me. I mean, I've, I've been on so many webinars, so many trainings. You know, Friday night, 6.30, right? I'm on a virtual training for my referee soccer certification about the changes to the laws of the game. They always do certain changes each year. Two hours of that, Friday night, Zoom right? So maybe there's my fatigue and my frustration coming through on that. But I will promise you that I'm always going to be honest. I'm always going to be constructive. And I'm here to help you grow your business. I'm here to help you save your money. I'm here to help you make money. And sometimes that's just not going to make me popular in certain circles. And I'm sorry about that. I'm not going to change. All right. We also have our Facebook forum, you know, and some people come up and said, no, I think this is good, whatever else. that That's cool as well. I welcome it, okay? This isn't a closed shop. So I'll, I'll end on that. Um, but I will say, it, it is, it, I'm learning. The minute you voice an opinion in this world, be prepared to be shot down. And lucky enough, I've got a thick skin, and I'm also prepared to accept when I'm wrong and to say that and to share that with you. Um, talking of arrival... Uh, They had a major announcement on Friday. So they have very briefly moved their Phoenix event to November. Uh, It's going to be live slash virtual. They are currently, as I understand it, as of today, what are we, June 7th, capped at 400. So the state of Arizona are saying no more than 400. That might change. Hopefully it goes up. Because I don't know if Arrival can make profit out of 400 people rocking up to Phoenix. Um, I don't know how many of you are going to want to do the virtual thing. As I said earlier on, I, I'm done. I'm tired with virtual. I've got to be honest with you. Like, I love nothing more than going out, listening to a podcast, working out, listening to a podcast. That I'm cool with, but sat in front of my computer for stuff. I'm trying to get away from the computer. And that's another... Uh, and I don't want you all feeling sorry for me. I'm just being candid. That's another thing about the lockdown. I mean, a content creator, I'm chained to the computer. I'm really having to work hard to break away and, and, and decouple, I suppose is the word, on, especially on the weekends. So that is going ahead. Now, there's a couple of tricky things here, and I want to talk you through my decision. I made a decision on this this morning. So the email from Arrival said, we're announcing major updates to Phoenix. The new dates are November 1st to 4th, 2020. 
limited number of people. It's currently capped at 400 and will remain so until further information is released by the authorities. There are already 249 attendees registered. Additional registrations are on a first-come, first-served basis. We can only accommodate an additional 151. Okay. There's also the virtual ticket as well. Uh, for this so the the conditions of also the and, and i give arrival some credit for this they, they've actually updated their terms and conditions as you know i said a few weeks ago i was confused as to what would happen if we paid for arrival and then due to coronavirus it doesn't go ahead is there a credit is there a refund etc because i know there is still some of our listeners who uh, some of you some of us are still concerned about Berlin and getting refunds back and credits and everything else. So I took a look at the terms and conditions. So cancellations must be submitted in writing outside of 60 days. So basically now um, you're subject to a hundred dollar admin fee. So if you didn't want to go to Phoenix, you're going to have to cough up a hundred. Um, cancellations received inside 60 days of the event are subject to loss of all monies paid. So make sure you put that <laughs> in your calendar. Uh, that's going to be a, a date two months out that you need to let them know if you're not going. And then I, I looked at, I scrolled further down because force majeure is one of these gray areas, right? It's sometimes full of legalese. And I, and I give arrival credit because they say a force majeure event includes the following if a local government authority issues any order of recommendation, so people who need to uh, limit time away from their residences, who can't travel from certain states, and I presume that's the states where our friends and arrival are based, um, that will be a force majeure. And it says, if arrival is prevented from carrying out his obligations as it p- pertains to the event for which you registered as a result of any cause beyond its control or I shall shall have the right to select an alternate date and attendee agrees to participate per the T's and C's herein. So, yeah, you're getting the credit, which I have no issue with because it's clear. Now, I will talk through my issue. So I thought, okay, what do I do? Because it's also the same date as WTM in London, and I wanted to go there this year. I had some meetings if it goes ahead, right? Had some meetings there and I thought, great, I haven't been in quite a few years. I'll go this year. So do I go to WTM? Do I go to Arrival? Plus, there's a little election on that week. Now, okay, we can vote by postal ballot, but I know many of you are involved in that process. (laughs) I have some other private thoughts on that, but I'm not going to share them because I just said I'd be agnostic. (laughs) I'm sure you can guess what they are. So there's a lot, lots of decisions. And then I'm like, okay, you know what? I absolutely support the arrival guys. I will go. I will register because I want arrival to succeed. I want arrival to be around next year. And then I looked at the, so for me to go 945 bucks for you as a tour operator to go, it's 745 bucks up until July 31st. If you just want the virtual component, it's 349 bucks up until September 15th. But then I'm like, oh, well, I had to read those T's and C's because I thought, well, what happens if I pay over the 945 bucks and it gets cancelled? But looking at those T's and C's, and again, that's why I'm grateful they've made it clear there will be a credit. Now, I don't know. Quite honestly, my worry there was, is Torpreneur going to be around next year? And I say that because I'm trying to make this a business. And it may be that come January next year, I'm like, with everything that's happened this year, maybe there'll be no Torpreneur. And that credit is worthless to me. I'd like to think the arrival guys would let me transfer it to someone. And I'm really hoping that Torpreneur is around in 2021, but that's what my thought process is. And I know, unfortunately, it's the same for many of us that we're all thinking, well, do I want to pay that? Because it's the 945 bucks, airfare, getting anywhere from Vermont, is stupid prices. And then hotels, food, drinks, etc. So this isn't a cheap undertaking. But I'm going. And here's the thing. I want to share this with you because it's really important. I love the work that Arrival do so much. They normally issue me with a press pass because I'm doing interviews, doing media work. And that's that's free. Okay, I work, right? I, 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 as you know, from particularly from, from Orlando, is it 20 interviews plus? But I don't want the media pass this time. I will still carry out interviews, but I want to support Arrival. So... I've just plunked down $945 on my credit card to support them. 
because I want them to be around next year. Also this week, we launched the beta version. Is it beta or beta? <laughs> um, data or data? Uh, we launched the Tourpreneur Approved Directory. Uh, now, this is a, a cool resource where I want us to, when we've hired someone for our business that have performed a really good job, given us tons of value, I want you to to recommend them in our Torpreneur Approved Directory, whether it's a WordPress expert, whether it's a graphic designer, whether it's a copywriter, whether it's a bookkeeper, right? Whether it's an insurance broker, whoever it may be, go to tourpreneur.com forward slash directory and there is a submission form there. It's very quick. You fill that in, give a little review, and then that will appear in our directory. And... This is a beta version, as I said. So it's a version one. And here's the way I looked at it. It's like when we launch a tour, we kind of test it, right? Is anyone going to book it? What's the feedback going to be like? Do I need to change it? Do I need to drop it? And V1, I probably spent about 150 bucks with various plugins, actually more than that, because I ended up having to hire someone who I will be recommending in the directory. She's doing a great job on the uh, implementation because it wasn't showing right on, on mobile and I want it to be responsive. And I, anyway, so... Um, my, my feeling is this, if I get 50 submissions, 50 recommendations from you, I will then invest some money to making it easier on the eye and a bit more user-friendly. Right now, it's pretty basic. You go in, you fill out the form. It's a, it's a drop-down sheet where you can go, right, I'm looking for a WordPress expert. Hit the drop-down, it brings up the WordPress experts. I'm looking for a digital marketer, same thing. Um, it doesn't really have bells and whistles. I want it to have bells and whistles, but I want you to show me that this is something that you're prepared to submit your recommendations to and you're prepared to use, and I will invest some cash into it. Now, here's the thing about cash. This week, talking about being a content creator, I ran a buy me a coffee donation appeal on my daily brief. If you're not on the daily brief, you can find it at tourpreneur.com. Uh, That's where I send out a digested brief each day of the main news and activities. And I sent that out because my costs are rising with the popularity. So with MailChimp, the more people that sign up, the more the monthly goes up. I subscribe to the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, the Times in the UK, various others. I donate to Skift. And it's just nice to know that those costs are covered. Otherwise, it's like, what's the point, right? What's the point? Uh, and I put hours into that every day. I think it's a great resource. Um, but I was really nervous putting up the buy me a coffee thing because I don't really like asking for donations. I'd much rather have a sponsor. Um, but I thought, no, you know, let, let's see how this goes. And blown away by the response um, from those of you who chipped in, buying me some coffee. Um, and uh, thank you very much for doing that. You know, you really do put fuel in my tank to keep producing the daily brief for you. And also, you know, using um, sponsorship money. You know, it's really important to, to keep Torpreneur alive. I need the sponsorship cash. And that's going on, for instance, the directory, that 150 bucks or so is coming out of my, out of, the, you know, Checkfront and Redeem and TRK Creative, all those that have sponsored the show. Uh, and now the donations from Buy Me A Coffee. So I have tons more learning, actually. There was the Secret Food Tours article. I've got some views on that. And actually, that was the first article I wrote where I tried not to inject my own opinion, but to give you the facts as part of my journalism course. I've been studying with Mitch and Alan over at Trip School. They have a great course called How to Start a Tour Business. Uh, week one ended this week. My head is exploding with the amount of information they shared with us. Um, more on that coming up. So uh, again, thank you for joining me on this episode. This is my editorial. This is almost like my journal. I love seeing how many of you listen to these shows. Uh, coming up this week, we do have Kyla Steves from CheckFund. We're going to talk about local marketing. I also have a special interview coming up with a couple of food tourpreneurs who've got something exciting lined up for us. And I'm also speaking to a tourpreneur in Hong Kong. Now, not only have they had it, had it bad with COVID, they've had demonstrations, riots, and all sorts going on there. So I'm really intrigued to speak to a tour operator who's had to deal with all of that in the last few months. As always, come let us know what you think about today's show at tourpreneur.com forward slash Facebook. That's our private group for listeners. Be well, stay well, and I'll catch you soon. 
Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.